Welcome back to Commentary is Magic, stream of BabsCon 2022. I was not expecting four farm decks today. I was expecting three, but I How can you expect the eight? <laughs> um. All right. Are you ready for some good pony cards there, eminently? I am looking forward to it for sure. Looks like we have uh, Sonnet Scroll on the left and Bugle on the right, and Sonnet is going to get a look at Bugle's deck list. Or maybe her own. Is she playing Ambassador Rarity? Wait, is there only one party of one in here? Yeah. <laughs> Party of singular one. Yeah. One party of one. Yeah. Yep, that definitely looks like rarity. Very interesting. You don't see that often, but certainly she has come along now and again in the format. I see bodyguard. I see uh, Grogar's bell. Mist main. I heard something about a party of one. I see Discord for replacing problems. Sounds like a fun deck. Yeah, certainly uh, very interesting. So I think this is the first seed up against the eighth seed. Um, so yes. Sonnet did quite well, but not as spotless a record as Bugle, who I think went four and one oh, in Swiss. Hey, hey now. <laughs> Who said? Bugle looks at what to sideboard. Looks like Desert Road might be on his list of sideboard. I don't see Sonnet that much on the online play. Good to see her here. Yeah, definitely true. Um, yeah, I don't recall the last time I played against her, but it was probably in a Coco. Yeah, I played her recently in something, you know, maybe a month or two or three ago. Online. And that is definitely Rarity Ambassador of Generosity. I had to check and make sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, just like yep, so I suppose for anybody who's unsure what the ambassador does, because we haven't seen her on stream yet, um, you don't have to do anything to flip her. She just has to be... So you have to have fewer points than your opponent at the end of your turn. If that happens, she's going to flip over for free, and you score two points. It's like a, it's like a discount Solano. Except, Rarity also has an effect on her other side. Your opponent is going to have one fewer home limit, and Rarity is showy, so it can be more expensive to move to her. Um, she really has a lot of effects. It's not like a, a highly focused card, so you don't see it as much in competitive play. But, like, it is really quite interesting, and it does come up. 
stream. I'm hoping that you can hear us. Hello, Bugle. We can hear you. <laughs> did you use sideboard? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> Even. Okay. You took odds? Uh, I don't remember. Let's roll again. Okay. <laughs> I'll take Even. You'll take Even this time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Looks like Bugle will go first. I, I genuinely forgot because we I asked about the sideboards instead of rolling immediately like an idiot. <laughs> what if we both forgot? Then? Yeah. Maybe it's getting late for them too. <laughs> okay. Yep, still plenty late for them. It's it's already past nine. Um, and I think I talked about this a bit before, but when you are playing a whole tournament, both Swiss and Top Cut in one day, endurance as a player uh, starts to matter for sure. Yeah. You're going to see more mistakes in Top 8 than you might have seen in uh, Swiss here. So tell us, how does the timing of the Top 8 work with the uh, the number of rounds and the limits? And That is a good question. So I, I'm expecting that this is a best of one. Um, so I don't actually know how those work. I've not played best of ones, um, but we've got two and a half hours slotted yeah. for the event. So that does imply a certain amount of time, 50 minutes. Um, <sighs> previously in Top Cut, the only time you get is hard time. So it may be 50 minutes to hard time and then it's all yeah. over, but... I'm not exactly sure here. One more minute for setup. One more minute for setup, they say. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Set it with the Mod Pie playmat. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, a very nice playmat. Um, I love the free mulligan. I don't that see that one very much. It it is pretty and it is fun. Um, I don't know if it's yeah. custom. It's not custom, but I never seem to catch it when it was on like sale so that's why i don't think a lot of people own it <laughs> i see interesting um and then you know on the other side we've got a tried and true luna so i mean we did see bugle earlier but i think he's the only person who showed up with that playmat mm -hmm. i believe that playmat surprisingly enough was given out at a regionals so you see it quite a bit um oh. because like it's not that common to give out a playmat so widely as that um as a, you know, victory playmat. Um, I don't remember how well you had to do in the regionals to get that mat, but um, it was the same year that you got that Luna Mare in the Moon promo for attending the regionals. Bugle opens up with the Troublemaker. Well, that, that's fair. So he, we do know that the general level, game plan of Bugle here. So he's a farm control. Uh, um, if that's Triad of Terror, that's exactly what he wants. Yep. So he probably won't be farming that for a while. Um, it's mostly just going to be a very hey, hey, oppressive hey, hey, hey. kind of piece of the board. Rarity starting strong, actually scoring points, which for almost any main that you see starting with Staff of Sakanis would flip them over. But for Rarity, it actually gets her further away from flipping. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing she must have some good options for if she doesn't flip. And Bugle yeah. flips fast. I didn't know if you yeah, would uh, quite early. be able to do that so early. Sometimes you want to save those yeah, immediate uh, yeah, so exhausts, <laughs> but uh, when you get the dragon, the you go with it. Oh, right. She's yeah, yeah, she's yeah, the dragon uh, and then the honest pony that uh, um, was kind of the bane of Bugle's flip the in the last <laughs> game that we saw of his is <laughs> also just a very good way to open and get your main flipped uh, over. Does not pay to ready rarity maybe that's the plan to get uh get her flipped yeah a, a bit of the discussion there was just that um she didn't have actions yet 
in right. order to actually afford to rally her. Or, sorry, ready her. What is the timing on her coming back? Does she come back before or after problems are replaced? So, problems are only replaced during the solve step. The face-off has completed before. Okay, so she's probably going to go here then? Oh, okay. So, yeah. she's been playing her wrong this whole time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, actually, she's going to get frightened there. Oh, so does she go home then? I think she just goes okay, home. Okay, that's sad. Yeah, you're right. You're right. She will just get right yeah. there. <laughs> Good catch. I was thinking, oh, the show is great there. Not so much with the yeah. Legion. Okay. Uh, hey, what's the thing? Um, the one chaos card you have really scares me for you to get multiple. Tri well, you have two chaos. Ooh. That oh Speedy God, Bell <laughs> um, <laughs> is just kind of based on something we were kind of discussing off stream, Animoy. That Sweetie Bell is part of a cycle in um, the the set before the one that just came out uh, that I helped to design. Oh. Uh, so I'm going to plug it just because you really don't see the cycle very much. Um, it's the CMC kind of all in big end. Oh, yeah. So they are quite powerful. They're all two for fours, but they have dramatic downsides during face-offs. Um, and the part that I personally find the funniest about it is that I had originally only uh, submitted the design for the Apple Bloom, um, who is diligent but gets exhausted during a face-off. Um, I didn't flavor it as Apple Bloom because I'm not a I'm not a very flavorful person. Um, they decided that it would work better as the Apple Bloom in a cycle with the other two. Um, and when they made the other two. They were both better than Apple Bloom. So <laughs> Scootaloo is, is fairly strong, and Tweety Bell is also quite good. Yes, yeah, Sco Scootaloo was my favorite. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Sweetie Bell, certainly getting banished in a face-off is a, is a big downside. However, um, it does mean that she cannot be effectively targeted by the staff of Sakanas, which is kind of a fringe benefit but it is really funny oh you know you what else you get her she just goes away uh if you have bodyguards in play oh wow that is a really good synergy with bodyguards <laughs> everything i have is off character okay so yeah and if you did that uh rarity main that banishes an opposing friend until the end of the score phase or face off like that would be good with bodyguard too True, yeah. I'm thinking about it, and um, this Sweetie Bell is actually probably going to be fairly nice against Bugle, since Bugle is going to exhaust things, and uh. it's expensive to unexhaust them. You can just bounce her or flicker her instead. That, that's what I was uh, for. Okay. So there will be lasting consequences. Uh, we'll uncover Big Scary Trixie. Yes, a Triad of Terror has already um, stuck around for long enough that it becomes a problem. So, four counters is... It makes it, especially an aggro deck... Well, not to say Sun is, is aggro, but flipping up against an honest-to-goodness farm deck, um, it is very difficult to ever overcome four counters from the Triad of Terror. Yeah. And so at this point, without outside yeah. shenanigans that can be used to just banish it or otherwise get rid of it without uh, having to actually like have a face-off, um, <laughs> the game becomes very locked down. And there's very little that Sonnet can do until she gets one of those workaround cards. So that was a funny play. Um, Bugle moved his main and uh, Sonnet immediately sent it right back home um, during the main phase, which would give Bugle a chance to move it up again. And it seemed like too early to do that, but there's a troublemaker there, so it's fine. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Um, it it does kind of give Bugle the opportunity to move Applejack back during the main phase. Um, and, you know, that usually wouldn't matter if Sonnet had one more unicorn, because then Bugle just wouldn't be allowed to, to redo the move, because that's kind of the, the harmony effect on that event. Um, but you need three unicorns for it, and Sonnet only has two characters in play. So Bugle is probably going to wipe the floor with this Trixie when he when he gets around to his turn again. I don't believe Sonnet has boosted yet. True. Um, Bugle's at two, and I think Sonnet would be at two as well. So end of her next turn is the earliest that we'll see that happen. Hope we don't get those nasty chaos. Okay. Oh, yeah, and Sonnet has the, um, I think it's Diplomatic Debacle or something like that, um, where the chaos effects trigger twice. But, that is a, a very strong one, yes. And it's actually non-pink is the requirement, so... Right, which is, it's a fun cycle, because... Even though the one color you'd think you wouldn't want to play it with is pink, uh, pink is really good with chaos. So mm -hmm. it's very common that you'll see that card with pink, as we are seeing with Sonnet. Like, in theory, you would love to run that thing in a blue-purple. It's just blue-purple doesn't play chaos nearly as well as uh, pink. For example, we just saw Sonnet flip to Pinky Sense, and Pinky Sense is the premier way of uh, flip-rigging chaos cards in the current meta. Indeed. I see a chaos magic blast in her hand. There are non-villains. That would be that would be quite strong right now. I mean, it would be better if Bugle had a second friend to hit, but um, but yeah, flipping a chaos magic blast and you can't hit a random friend because there are, there's only one friend is very nice. And we get a bodyguard out. And she still has 6 AT. That is worrisome if I were in Bugle's position. Now, the thing is, there's very little Bugle can do to prevent Bodyguard from doing its thing. Um, all, all he could do would be exhaust the Bodyguards or, with Melted Expectations, take away its ability. But that's, that's a very short-term solution. That is a big shame. Um, that's a problem. Oh, and it if flips. <laughs> yeah, that... Uh, oof, this... This is a really, really bad position for Sonnet to find herself in. Kind of all at once, three really nice friends have been lost to her. I mean, two of them are just frightened. She can get them right back, but that Discord is down at the bottom of the deck. Um, we is, don't know. Ex did she? Oh, yes, does she okay. boost now, or maybe it's already boosted? Yes, I believe she boosted at the end of her last turn. Yeah, so just I, before that. I see the word showy on there. Tender depths. <laughs> Getting a pinky back is nice, but certainly not quite as good as what you'd see like later in the game with the tender taps. So right now it's still pretty early and Sana just doesn't have much in the discard. Honestly, she might never have very much in the discard because Bugle doesn't dismiss things. And, but, um, and Claude has just made Staff into a friend. <laughs> that That is worth noting, yes. <laughs> um, it's a really big friend, so there are pros and cons to that. Before, Staff was just giving Bugle three strength, and now it's seven.
counter on your main and scare Claude. So, still has the counter, but is back to being an act, not a friend. Uh, draw card for turn. So it looks like Sonnet is just preparing to try to get rid of the triad through good old brute force. And unfortunately, that is basically an admission that she doesn't have a better out. And looking at the numbers, we know she's not going to be able to do that anytime soon. Next turn, it's not going to work. Maybe the turn after that. Um, but in that time frame, Bugle's going to just completely ruin Sonnet's plans. So this is very bad, I would say. Um, this is getting to the point where, unless Sonnet top decks exactly what she needs in the next turn or two, um, it's going to become unwinnable. And Bugle's probably going to go one more turn to get to 11 before uh, fighting the Legion. Is he at 10 right now? Looks like it. In theory, he could just win next turn then, because there's enough points. Well, there's enough points for him to have won from nine, but I mean, it makes sense that uh, he's not oh. in a rush. Oh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Claude was frightened, so uh, Staff still has the counter on it, but uh, it is not a friend anymore. <laughs> right, yes. So it, it's kind of a good, you know, middle ground where. Even though it's counter-based, if you unfrighten Claude, like the effect still yes. comes back because the counter didn't leave. I don't know. I think I would have moved uh, the staff up to the problem. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, it it would have been a really strong friend, but I'm sure that Bugle has plans for for having a big Applejack. Really, you don't want to rely on friends too much when you're playing against Pink White because Pink White is just devastating against friends. It can it can really tear them up. Whereas your main is pretty much invincible there. So it looks like Sonnet played uh, the melting rarity uh, event to get rid of Bugle's flip card, but Bugle has a barrel through. Yep, so that's kind of both people played one event and approximately no board state change occurred. It is now hard to confront this, though. It is, so you break through. I might break through. Well, I mean, there's eccentric on tender taps, but... Uh, well, the main issue it. is that it's the pinky that requires three characters in order to confront. Um, but but now she's gone, so didn't end up mattering much. That pinky oh. is hasty, so you typically just want to toss her in as a trick. Um, you know, she was being used to kind of try and make the troublemaker work. Yeah, at this point, Bugle is, is farming the troublemaker because he's close enough to make this winnable. He's, he's definitely just going to try to win this turn. Sonnet is holding one action, so she probably has a trick like a belly flop, but Bugle knows that. He's he's very likely going to put enough at that problem to be able to confront through that. Well, I stand corrected. Well, I suppose that goes to show... Um, People make a few mistakes <laughs> during and, Top Cut when it's late in the and, day. And uh, she got rid of her eccentric there. That is interesting. I I do yeah. wonder why well, she made that choice. I meant there's nothing that she could, okay. she could lock down. Well, one of the reasons Bugle might not have been... Uh, super careful about making that uh, as perfect to win as possible is because there's no real path for Sonnet to win this turn, so Bugle's just going to wrap it up next turn. Mm -hmm. 
lose. Do whatever's the most fun, I think. Yeah, whatever's the most fun. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, Prism Light uh, is keeping us honest that it seems like Sonnet intended to hit Big Mac, but Backdraft was the one that ended up going to the discard. Um, in light of the current state of this game, not the most relevant thing, but certainly good to note and good to keep our eye out to make sure we aren't, um, you know, that type of thing would be a really big deal early in a game. Um, that could yeah. absolutely make or break a game. Well, Mistman's pretty cool. Um, certainly, everybody seems to have pretty Mistmans, and I'm just kind of <laughs> baffled by it. I've seen like like two royal rares ever um, outside of like my opponents in high level tournament play. I've seen like two people ever get them in drafts. I don't understand how people have so many of the darn things. You know what was weird was I pulled three royal rares of the Tempest Shadow friend from Sequestria, and I never got an ultra rare. <laughs> oh, wow. That is interesting. I just wish it would see play. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have never actually myself pulled a royal rare, so it's still a forbidden fruit for me. <laughs> I can't believe this didn't trigger a single time. Yeah. There are so many faces. So that went pretty fast, and Bugle wins that. Yeah, early Triad of Terror. I mean, in all honesty, that game went how a lot of games you see in this meta go. You've got a Troublemaker deck and a not Troublemaker deck. And if the Troublemaker deck happens to get a Triad of Terror turn one, they're probably going to win exactly like mm -hmm. that. It's a bit unfortunate. Luckily, you don't see it in every game. Um, there are definitely ways around Triad of Terror, but if your opponent doesn't have one of those ways, you... You basically have no path to victory. Oh, I've, I know I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like most people have experienced that at this point. And it's not to say that Sonnet Scroll didn't have answers in her deck. She just didn't get them in time because, you know, Bugle being a farm can end that game fairly quickly. You know... People in pink, they're running even more problem replacement now. You know, Discord or... Uh, yes, it, it's a very techy game right now. And uh, the new pink event. Smile, smile, smile. Oh, yes. That one is that one is very well liked. People, people have been experimenting with that one a lot. It has a lot of interesting uses. We could be here a while now. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I know for two out of threes, it is fairly common once you're in top cut to just move a game in progress over to the stream. Uh, probably if we're only playing one, then we won't be that lucky. But it sure sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun over there. <laughs> So let's look at our top eight. Um, first place was Bugle. Second place, Ivory. Third place, Big Cheese. Fourth place, Sketchbeam. Fifth place, Aracat. Sixth place, Godot. Seventh place, Smithers. And eighth place, Sonnet, who we just saw. And uh, winner of the Salt Cup is Double R Forest in the nine slot. 
So, since we've got some dead air that um, probably people are just going to check out for, uh, I say that we fill it with our hot takes. So, we know the matchups, and we've seen all of them play. Let's give our uninformed hot takes of who we think is going to win each matchup. Okay, so let's look at uh, Smithers versus... That would be versus Ivory. Ivory. So that is going to be a pretty conventional farm versus aggro matchup, where farm is always favored. However, Smithers is certainly an aggro specialist. So if there's a way through, Smithers would be one of the people to find it. I'm sure he came to this tournament expecting some farm. So... He probably has some, like, sideboard-specific cards to try to get him out of a jam. The issue is he's playing mono blue, and there's just not much. I don't think he can do it. I think that one goes to Ivory. Now, in blue, there's that... I think it's a... Is it a... No, it's not Rainbow Dash. It's a... Uh... Spitfire, I think, in mono oh, blue. Oh, the new one. Where, yes. where it... Uh... It can defeat a troublemaker by retiring Pegasi. Yes, um, that is fairly strong, and it would work okay in a Luna. Um, but uh, you would probably want to have some um, some token synergy in order to make Spitfire work, because she is a bit expensive. Um, but yeah, no, it's a good point, and Smithers definitely could be sideboarding that. You know, but you're probably not going to find all three of those in a match. <laughs> yeah, and the issue is, it's a useful solution, but because of the timing of farm, like, that only works if there's a troublemaker face-up on the board that wasn't immediately farmed, mm -hmm. because the farmer always has the priority, flip, then they can farm it. And so, if they are worried, and they don't want to have troublemakers out, and they just want to farm, like, they can do that. Um, the, the Troublemaker is never going to be at risk if they just want to farm it directly the turn that they mm -hmm. uncover it. However, even though I say that, like probably Ivory would want to have Troublemakers face up just most of the time because that's going to be a big problem for Smithers. Mm -hmm. or, or at least one Troublemaker face up. Yeah, and then one that probably he's farming turn over turn, assuming he has enough to do that. All right, let's take a look at Godot versus Big Cheese. Now, that is interesting. So, Godot is playing a Luna, and I believe that's also a mono Luna. That makes me realize a lot of mono aggro. Two mono Lunas and two mono Octavias. Hmm. Um, though I guess the Octavias didn't do quite as well as the Lunas did. Um, was Sketchbeam playing? Uh, I am blanking. Sketchbeam did not play Reanimator. Uh, I think he could have been an Octavia. I think but, he was, but uh, don't quote me on that. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. So, if he is the Octavia, he is the highest ranking um, aggro in the top cut, so that's pretty impressive. Um, but my hot take on Big Cheese versus Godot, that really does come down to how effective was Big Cheese able to make control after it got banned to the moon. Um, the fact that Big Cheese made it to third seed implies that he was able to put together a pretty I'm solid I'm deck. I'm T posing at you. Okay. All right, Ara has come to we save the day action. with content. Yes. There. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a T pose. His pony. Uh, so okay, four, so it, it seems that most players have concluded already. Sketch and 
a sonnet earlier today in uh, Team Sealed, open the staff of Sakonin. Wow. Someone pulled the staff of Sakonis in Team Sealed. That's, that's pretty game warping. I bet they did well. <laughs> Sure. But yeah, for, for Strange Benefit, uh, they opened a staff in Team Sealed. They, they've both been eliminated in top eight, and they opened another staff from their three Sequestria packs. Plus the Shadows, <laughs> plus the Somnambulum. Yeah. Wow. In six packs, they got three Ultra Rares and another staff for today. Also, none of that matters because they also pulled a Sphinx. That's a real hero. Oh, right? is it? Okay. Ah, yeah, Sphinx is the true, yeah. That's what we really need. It's just the 45 Sphinx deck. Especially when you have the Sphinx main. I think we need a functional errata for Sphinx that allows you to play more than three of them. Yeah, I'm behind that. Heard it here first, folks. Animoy is supportive. <laughs> So, Aracat, um, we, we talked about this before with Aracat when he boldly decided to go for a 45-card deck. Aracat uh, has succeeded immensely in this tournament so far, so that strategy worked for him. Additionally, he does not want to see Bugle's deck, nor does he want to sideboard. That is very interesting. Um, like what we talked about before done. is that you don't want to add unnecessary stress if that is kind of a damper on your play style. Like, don't information overload if you don't think it's going to be useful. Um, in Top Cut, I would have expected him to look at Bugle's deck list. However, it is also very late. Maybe he doesn't trust himself to use that information to any benefit. I'm not sure. <laughs> I know he said before that um, an incorrect sideboard guess is worse than no guess at all, but the right. uh, when the deck lists are known, I don't know. Yeah, um, so I, I was quite supportive of his decision not to sideboard in Swiss. Here, uh, maybe it's for the memes. I'm not exactly sure. And plus we're playing for fun here, right? Fun and glory. I mean, I'll try, but I don't have full control over the situation. <laughs> I really don't. Like, it would be better if I did, but a loss. Uh, Two dash and mullets. Uh, I think there's a that staff is a very on the blue left. Hand. And uh, flash magnus shield. It looks like he's also got a grandpa gruff. Um, Ooh, Which is a perfect. less flashy card, but very good to open with here. Uh, we have to we determine who goes first before all the Going first is pretty important here in an aggro versus farm matchup. Getting those early troublemakers out is pretty big. I don't know if we've seen uh, Starlight Glimmer Troublemaker move anybody yet today. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't believe so. Even though we got a pretty long game with Bugle, I don't recall that card. Maybe it was boarded out. Arcat is not happy with that one. Um, certainly, I don't know the deck as well as he does, but it entered and it had Swinging Wonders, so I look at it and I'm like, Yoza. <laughs> All I can think is maybe he wanted troublemakers or maybe uh, wanted a cheaper friend. Yeah, opening with Swinging Wonders is definitely not as good when you don't have impressive cards to move around. 
Also, if you can flip Luna on a friend early, then like Staff of Sakanis isn't as necessary. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's better to just, yeah, have those troublemaker answers or have answers to friends, just get more frightened. Here comes the Legion. We've, we've seen that. You can confirm it's a Legion. Because uh, that's bad news. Did Bugle have any resources? I don't think so. Oh, that is a good question. Um, I mean, he had Desert Road, but he's always sideboarded it out. Desert Road would be quite good in this matchup. Do we know that he has that? Oh, yeah, I do remember him boarding it out. I bet he didn't board it out this time. Arakat has two Troublemakers in hand. He also has a Thunder Lane. If he can make that Thunder Lane do work early enough, he can definitely get over that Triad of Terror. But the Triad of Terror needs to go soonish, or else this game might look a lot like last game. Yeah, I don't know if he has a shield. The shield would help. Okay. I... Yeah, that's a good... Question. I do see a shield there. Okay, that's pretty solid. That's actually, yeah, a, a very strong card. Um, Bugle, I assume that his resource removal is not very much. Um, maybe it's Winterzilla's? I doubt he was willing to put Big Mac in the deck because of the flip. So, getting those strong farm-based resources out early is going to be a pretty big deal in farm versus farm. Here comes a fear counter. <laughs> I'm afraid. Ooh, a desert road. All right. Well, this might be a high octane resource extravaganza. Maybe he sideboarded out two desert roads and kept one. I'm just gonna pass. Uh, Chooses to pass. So I think Arakat is considering saving for a uh, a big play like Thunderlane, and Bugle is probably considering playing that uh, desert road as quickly as possible, which would be next turn. Yeah, that would be good against Dash and Mullet. Yeah, it would also be fairly helpful against Thunder Lane. It's not as good, but um, preventing the first Diligent is pretty big. And then also uh, Rutherford is one of the main things that you're protecting yourself against. Trying well, to fight I mean, the Nightmare Moon, but... Yes. Both of them flip quite well, uh, as you would expect, but Bugle flipped a little better and was already up by a bit, so Arakat knows better than to waste his powder trying to, like, get up to a tie on a fight like that when the only downside is moving Luna back, and she's going to move up next turn, so yep. it's totally fine. Thanks to the problem. 
So definitely think that Ara just going for it and seeing if he could get a big flip win there uh, is the right call for sure. Um, and it's really no big deal that he lost it. Mm -hmm. I guess probably um, Arakat's actually going to put Luna up to try out of terror and try over there, just because that is the much more important target. I wish he had the shield out there before doing that. Yeah, that's true. Um, having played the shield last turn would have made sense. But maybe he's holding out hope that Thunder Lane is going to make all his problems go away, <laughs> which that's pretty reasonable. Well, so he's down by five. Thunder Lane would tie, which is not a good place to be. Ara is nothing if not bold. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to call that a win. Bugle really could have afforded to wait until the flip, but um, but he didn't. And that's, like, it's wise just to not risk it. Ara Cat probably flips a little higher than Bugle. Okay, I'm not confident there. Oh, they... and you know what's going to happen now? Uh, Thunder Lane will never ready <laughs> because of the main. That is an issue. It will have ready, correct. And then I have to pay one to get it to stay. Except Applejack will keep her locked down. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah, um, so that part is a shame. Let me, um, let me see if uh, Ara has uh, a readying card in his in his deck. Yes, that is that is going to be important. Just getting riled up on that Thunder Lane. Now, the hilarious thing is, the Thunder Lane is like still going to be relevant. Like, he can move that Thunder Lane. He can get diligent counters on it. And like keep moving it around and doing silly things, it's just never going to contribute. <laughs> um, but since he's got tarnished reputation, like that Thunder Lane might be bouncing around all over the place. And he does have three riled ups. Okay, very solid. That um, that's going to help a lot, because Bugle can't really get rid of the Thunder Lane. Like this is as removed as he's ever going to get. So as soon as the riled up is like in Ara's hand, like that's a one cost Thunder Lane, basically. Prism says there's a stop fighting in Ara's hand. Arakat draws his own Legion of Doom. My prediction for next meta? Orange. 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 Orange supremacy. <laughs> I'm honestly a little surprised that neither player prioritized getting their resources out as quickly as possible. Um, I... I would expect um, to want to get the shield out immediately, and I'd also expect to want to get Desert Road out pretty quick. I mean, I understand that Desert Road isn't quite as imperative as, like, saving actions for a bailout. So Bugle was definitely in the right last turn, but, but Desert Road seems fairly strong here. Looks like uh twelve. Your oh no. That is my right. That is yours. That that is a a harsh realization to learn that instead of being doubled, your hand limit is in fact halved. <laughs> Uh, 
counter number four. Draw card for turn. So, I admire uh, Ara's speed and his knowledge that he had to get that um, that troublemaker away as soon as possible. And the fact that it didn't work is probably going to be a really big issue. Um, the fact that the Triad of Terror is really just tearing things up. Arakat being a farm probably did not pack any, um, like extra legal troublemaker removal besides just punching them in the face uh and so getting rid of that triad of terror is just going to get harder and harder and this is what we used to see back in the olden days when farm was kind of the top dog and you would see orange farm play against blue farm is that orange farm brings a lot of tricks that are specific for farming it brings extra flips and it brings exhaustion effects and those give Blue Farm a lot of trouble. So Orange Farm has always been kind of advantaged in the particular farming matchup that we're seeing here. And the shield comes in. Yes, it's a, that shield is very good. Um, I would have liked to see it earlier. I don't know if that would have made a difference um, in preventing that Nightmare Moon farm, just because Arakat also got a, a pretty bad flip. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see that shield come out eventually, because that is going to be a really big swing here. If the shield ends up being enough to get rid of the Triad of Terror, then, then this game becomes open season for Arakat just in the precise opposite way that it is now. I mean, he can also play the staff and get a little more power. That's not even affecting him right now. I mean, I have the token still. I can't do anything to the... Yeah. Um, I don't believe I have anything else to do. Here you go. Okay. Uh, game three. Draw a card for turn. I think I agree with that. Arakat, what he really needs right now is a big burst turn to just take out this troublemaker that is giving him all the trouble. Um, and he's going to have to save one or two or three turns worth of actions to have a really confident um, ability to kill the Triad of Terror. So just banking and... Playing the shield, obviously, is a smart move. But then just just waiting and being prepared is the right call. Uh, this is a problem. Yeah, that's a and, great flip. Yeah, when I say this, I mean specifically Princess for a Night Big Mac. Um, first played seriously in farm by Pancake, I think. Uh, in blue farm, no less. Blue plus orange plus purple. Um, but... It works very well in Orange Farm. Um, being able to put power counters on your main is unreasonably strong. <laughs> so now Applejack is full time six power, um, which is comparable to what you would see from Maud back in the old days. Uh, if you combine that with the out of control Tri of Terror and this new staff of Sakanis, then Applejack can do anything for the rest of the game basically um she's never gonna lose a face off i think i still had it but i don't remember let's see your main was at four power plus you flip okay so princess for a night is functionally a six flip ara flipped seven and the tricky troublemaker was yes she was still up by two i was oh no wait no wait i'm sorry this was minus five right so eight one twelve plus seven yeah, I think, I think Bugle loses. Okay, I was down. Okay, um, what is the best way to resolve this? Because I've drawn cards since then. How many cards have you drawn since then? Two cards. Did you pay to draw them? I paid to draw them. Is this a real game? Can you both acknowledge which cards those were? Why do you ask? Because they're taking it very seriously with the judge. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this this one is not a friendly. This 
uh, Arakat and Bugle just won their games a little early and so started the next one. Oh, okay. This is real, people! <laughs> this is real. So they got an official warning of failure to maintain game state. <laughs> that um, doesn't do anything. Like, that's not a problem unless you do it again, I'm pretty sure. Um, but, yeah, um, I think the, the ruling there with the failure to maintain game state is the old game state is not recoverable. And so you just have to proceed. Um, but, you know, you also get that little slap on the wrist where if you do that again, then you might be in some legit trouble. Obviously, we know these two very well. They are not meaning to uh, make trouble, but when your game state is not recoverable, there's there's not really anything better you can do from a rules perspective. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with AJ going home and Trixie staying in play. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's very hard to fix that after the fact. Yeah. No. <laughs> I owe Silver Cole a quarter. Also, you should explain that was not anger at the game. That was anger at owing Silver Cole a quarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's certainly a bummer, and um, at, at this point, obviously, both players made a mistake, um, but it's it's kind of, Arakat probably feels a little bad about missing that, just because it's a lot worse for him. Now, what I also know about Arakat is I doubt he's taking it too harshly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in sympathy, they should have taken away a couple fear counters. <laughs> <laughs> Luna is emboldened. He's like, well, if you go can cheat, I can cheat. You don't scare me. And there's That's the a two staff. step swing this turn. Arakat is rocking the promo staff, which those are the ones that were printed too big. And Arakat himself was the one who fixed everybody's cards by um, cutting them down. He trimmed mine. Mine I've never actually used, so he's never fixed them for me. Bugle also recently said in chat that he did not get his trimmed either. He thought it was kind of sacrilegious. <laughs> well, I guess that's why he's not playing with the promos. Do we wish to punch it? I'm going to try. So, five, six, seven, eight, three, five. Wow, Bugle is actually going to take out the Triad of Terror. Probably, if he succeeds. Um, it's, it makes sense because it's so close to getting beaten up by Luna. Yeah, I think he, he might be saying, hey, let's just cut and run. Um, because Arakat, you know, banked and is preparing very explicitly to beat that thing up. Two big flips wins it for yeah. Bugle. Well, I suppose it's uh, one of them flipped a seven, then a four, and the other flipped a four, and then a seven. So, pretty fair. I wonder if Bugle did that because he has another triad in hand. Um, I didn't see if that's what that card is, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I will proceed to Scorpion. I'll come to confront. Uh, I believe I have... Uh, you're going to confront with it. Just AJ alone, aren't you? Okay. Yeah, she is six. Yeah, you got it. Nine. She would be nine, but... Someone, someone broke, broke my... Someone broke my... You're my six, six, yeah. Um, go ahead. Uh, we are above six now. We are above six. Okay. Who's the watch on? 
-hmm. Well, don't they have cat. a problem face off there? Um, Luna is six, and they need seven there. Ah, gotcha. So, I mean, Araket is currently winning the resource game, uh, which is a big deal. And now that the Troublemaker is gone, Araket is in, like, dramatically the better position, except for the fact that his score is much less. And that is a big problem. Uh, a free farm, not a farm, but a Troublemaker beat up on a cute little Starlight Glimmer, um, that does get you some Troublemaker draws, so... That's not bad. And when he played that uh, Prince Rutherford, I, I almost forgot that uh, Bluna comes along as well. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Luna has kind of been wallowing in despair for the last few turns here. GG Chaos. That's GG just doing everything all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, finally getting rid of that darn stop fighting. On top of my things. <laughs> uh, I have. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll take the... So I think he has uh, another uh, legion in his hand. Uh, um, Arakat does. Really? Right okay. I kind of wish I would have moved Thunderling up, though. The diligent counter would have been nice. Oh, well. Still with your diligence. Yeah. Uh, this goes on the bottom. Yep. Did uh, Arakat okay. process the Prince Rutherford? <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like he decided that he didn't want to process it, which does yeah. surprise me. Well, I suppose he just has enough troublemakers. Yeah, and then you have to start discarding things. Um, but yeah, he also noted that he wished he had moved up the, the Thunder Lane. He, he could have moved up the Thunder Lane for free at the start of the turn oh, with the yes. Tarnish Strip. He hadn't been doing that because... Thunderlane would have been in danger of getting getting frightened, so it was never like worth it. Thunderlane was much safer at home, um, but this was the turn where it would have been useful. Your suspicion was correct. It was another Legion, and the fear counters are back online. Yep. So it looks like Bugle is not trying to be a Machiavellian jerk, and he is trying to just <laughs> close this game out. So he's just using it for the points. Oh my gosh. Stop fighting actually did something, <laughs> and now we're tied. No, I'm not going to flip a card here. I'm going to play. I really would have expected Bugle to just be okay with the flip, but it makes sense that he probably was going to end up using that bailout anyway, because bailout is a very good card. And that's going to give Applejack the one more power that he needs to win the face-off. So now I'm winning. I am disappointed. Okay. <laughs> game, game three. Uh, three, three points. points. Yay! Well, they're all gone! She's not scared now, anymore. Now, the, the good uh, thing about Arakat doing that, like, Arakat doing the stop fighting is just an all-around good call because... Oh, yeah, you have well. to. You have to. You have to try. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I was gonna say that Bugle needs more to confront that, but now that he's played a bailout, Applejack is five. But now that I say that, Applejack had two power counters, so Applejack's seven, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm gonna pay One, two, five, six, seven. Oh. Yep, you're right. And he's got a four five. Yes. Thirteen. And Apple Bloom makes an appearance. Yep, so Apple Bloom is. I guess we didn't see Bugle playing Apple Bloom last time. Or any of the other two games we've seen Bugle on stream, actually. But Apple Bloom turns all of his face off tricks, which are already pretty good, into just. just wow. Um, so at this point, even though Arakat has the resource advantage, it's going to be hard for Arakat to win face-offs just in general here because um, everything's going to be exhausted all the time. 
Now, it's not necessarily easy for Bugle to farm either, because Arakat's shield is still going to be a pretty big deal. But at this point, Bugle can probably just grind out to a win. Oh, and there's the event that readies things. <laughs> yeah, just in time. I think that's the second one that Arakat has flipped. Oof. Punchy dash, move nothing. Move nothing. Okay, so you're... Yeah. Right now? I mean, honestly, Plushy Dash could move Luna away. It wouldn't make a okay. difference. You got it. Um, but uh, Arakat got it. Bugle's not going to fight him there. It takes Hooray! Arakat to four points. It does get uh, two Diligent counters. So that's a true victory. I believe I'm going to continue not caring about Okay, fair enough. Seriously, if my, friend, if my, my hand was kind of bad for a while there, it's still pretty bad, but it's better. It got better. It's okay. Uh, that might work. I don't know. I'll try. Scroll maker. Uh, Farm it. You got it. That's what you're here for. You're here to farm. You might as well. How long can I flail? Well, I'm glad to see Ara getting back on the board here. Did a lot of stuff, and he still has 118 left. Yeah, yeah, he's been. I mean, a lot of his turns seem to be, you know, play one troublemaker and then play one high power character, um, like the Rutherford and the uh, Plushy Dash, which is pretty in keeping with Blue Farm's usual pace, which is about one, one big card a turn. And uh, we have a concede. Wait, where is she? Where's Gigi? After seeing what both decks were bringing to the fight, it definitely seems like that was the outcome that you'd usually expect. Bugle just has a lot of answers to Blue Farm. Bugle has so much exhaust. Um, and Bugle is just better with Triad of Terror and making that work. Sounds like uh, Godot won. All right, so we've got our, our last match, which is more mono blue against Bugle. So mono blue has been doing very well this tournament, but not as good as mono orange. I am recognizing a theme, which is <laughs> mono. It wasn't a singing barrel. It was, yeah, it was singing it barrel. Was singing barrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was Steve. I don't think we ran barrel. Looks like we still have six viewers, so people are staying up. Thank you all for watching. For still watching. You're the good ones. The best ones. White diamond up in the corner. This is a white card, GP. <laughs> I'm telling you, play Grand Paws with that and do your move to... Yeah, I mean, that is that is really the secret sauce. Um, it's a shame that we didn't get to see Smithers do that, <laughs> even though he could have. He was on the cusp. He had the board state that he needed, and he chose not to engage. He chose not to be petty, and I'm not <laughs> sure I can forgive him for that. <laughs> well, we have established that that can beat this deck, so we've also established the opposite. It's a bill, like it's doable. Yeah. Up we uh, have someone uh, in stream chat that uh, is uh, showing some ex exhaustion. <laughs> yes. Uh, struggling to keep one's eyes open is pretty much everybody's boat right now. Their name sounds a little bit like yours. It does. That is no coincidence. I know this human being. <laughs> I suppose that is the one 
All right, we've got an honest to goodness evaluation of deck lists. So, uh, these two are are doing the serious business, even though based on their conversation from earlier, they may have play tested each other previously <laughs> with basically these decks. But they're going to do it right. They're going to really evaluate and make sure they know what they're up against because this is for all of the beans. And the bane of Ara's existence, the handwritten deck list. <laughs> Ah, Fugle noticing the caroler that we noticed earlier in the stream, ah. and it was used to great effect. Sure. Is that a Defenders of Equestria card? Yes, it is. The carolers, as well as the holiday spirits. My Little Pony collectible card game. Yep, that's the official name. Uh, yeah, uh, if you can, like, they, they can uh, give you a lot of, uh, like, hook you up with starters and stuff, yeah. Oh, someone is showing interest in the game. Yeah, Bugle is, uh, is being the face of the pony yeah. cards. Which, uh, He's probably thinking, standard. I'm kind of in the middle I mean, of something no, here, but... I mean, this this is so certainly far. that type of community <laughs> where, <laughs> where we're in the top game of the convention, and, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna chat up with anybody who's interested. Oh, is that the Spitfire, Spitfire that we were talking about yes. earlier? Yes, it is. Those are staying in. I hmm. think Godot is thinking about whether or not uh, the dash is worth keeping. And it's a tough question. He's going with no. I think I agree with that. Using property damage on Desert Road. I don't think it works. Oh, no, it's an immediate. You can... Yeah, it it, yeah. it will work. Um, you know, it's it's pretty feels bad when you're up against an exhaustion deck um, because yeah. Bugle has so many ways to counter that. But, I mean, if Luna can quickly enough get out of under the weather and actually change the starting problems then it becomes a lot more viable. I'd imagine Bugle will be looking for Legion in the opening hand. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no reason for that not to work. Um, we've seen that uh, <laughs> do everything so far, honestly. That's been the story of this top cut, is Legion of Zoom is... Sorry, Legion of Doom is uh, pretty good. Um, now, as we've seen here... Godot has plenty of answers to Legion of Doom in theory, but he might not get them in time, and Bugle has a lot of control effects that could potentially prevent, you know, Godot from, for example, just doing a double on a dilemma. That might not work because Bugle might bail out Luna, for example. Mm -hmm. The only sure thing is the Spitfire wing leaders, and that's going to cost you four Pegasi if you include Spitfire herself. So that's pretty painful, too. And Lyra is not a Pegasus. Yeah, so Godot has a lot of Pegasi, but Rutherford, Lyra, and Daybreaker are not. So we, we don't have that many Pegasi in, in Godot's deck, unless he has token generation, which he might. I'm not sure. I mean, I guess you get a little more token generation in Adventure with uh, 
Is it a Spitfire that gives you three uh, Pegasus tokens? Yes, that is also a Spitfire. So the one-two Spitfire combo is is quite strong in Adventure. And it's certainly possible that Godot is running that, though I did not see it for sure. Godot helpfully reminding us that he is, in fact, Godot. <laughs> Oh, wow. Two mono decks just deciding to switch their mains to off colors. That would be. <laughs> that would be a travesty. Um, I know that Bugle is running straight entry with Honest Pony. And I think Godot also has Loyal Pony. But those are probably both of those players' only ways to enter if they didn't have their main. So that would be a slog of a match. I think Godot drew a loyal pony. Yeah, it looked like it, which is pretty solid for sure. I think that's a Gilda that moves... not Gilda... Gretchen that moves a character? Um, I don't think he has that in the deck, uh, so the I'm gonna one. guess it's a, a GG. Ah, uh, that makes sense. The only reason I say that is some of the banter he was having with Bugle earlier implied that he switched out Lyra for that uh, Greta. So Lyra Caroler, which is most of the time a move for two cost, is what he decided to replace Greta, which is a definite move for three cost. Plays a loyal pony, boosts Luna, confronts... Going second here on Godot's mm. part definitely hurts because you're you're kind of just out of cadence for the uh, troublemakers and you don't get to that second point. It's a big bummer. Also, you know the biggest bummer of them all, the Triad of Terror. Like Daybreaker, we've got two Daybreakers in hand. That would be incredible against Triad of Terror if it weren't for the fact that Triad of Terror gets a frighten every turn. Mm -hmm. So. It's very hard to amass an army and park it in front of the Triad of Terror. You need to basically do everything all at once. What do you think uh, Bugle's looking for with that Banish? That is a good question. I might think Trixie, um, but that's only because I know Godot has Daybreaker. Um, in the absence of that, he might just want the Grogar banished. Um, okay. It might not actually be that relevant, but probably it's something like Trixie or Tr Chrono Trigger. I, I don't believe that um, Bugle has Pony of Shadows, which would also be fine. Godot rallies and confronts again, and it was a Trixie. Trixie is definitely the easiest to defend. So this is the situation in which Bugle has everything pretty much locked down. Uh, Godot did draw into a wing leader, but he's going to need a lot of Pegasi, and he can't use the, the Spitfire on... Trixie, because Spitfire has no effect on Trixie, so it'll have to be three Pegasi. Godot banks and passes. And Trixie is defeated. So at this point, this is pretty textbook. Um, I guess 
you usually don't expect Bugle to play two Troublemakers at once, but, I mean, that's not too crazy. Just having a triad and farming the other one consistently is exactly where Bugle wants to be. Um, Godot is going to have to do something to break out of this funk pretty soon. It doesn't necessarily have to be this turn, but it has to be pretty soon. I mean, maybe he's saving up for uh, dilemmas, but no, he rallied uh, Rainbow Dash there, so... Yeah, so I get what he's doing, which is just... He's paying two actions for one point, and then, you know, things are getting frightened consistently. It's reasonable. Like, that's not a terrible deal, but in a matchup like this, which is, first of all, very fast, and second of all, all about who has the momentum. Um, farm versus aggro is very momentum-based. If aggro can get a double face-off, they're looking so much better. Um, I do worry that those actions is just it's just not nearly a good enough deal to actually get Godot out of the hole that he's currently in. Godot flipped uh, Gigi and had draw has to draw two and discard two. That is quite good, just because it's getting him much more in position to actually use that Spitfire and just punch through the um, the Triad of Terror. Uh, Bugle thought they were tied. They they weren't tied because of the the fear counters, but that's okay. Same outcome either way. It's just so bad for Godot to have friends out with uh, the supposing main. That's true. I mean, it is nice that he's able to keep Godot's... Or that Godot is able to keep Bugle's power a little lower, because there's just less to exhaust. Mm -hmm. But not having friends has been a big issue here for Godot. I mean... Bluna likes friends. Yeah, Bluna also likes being ready. So that uh that backdraft is annoying for sure. Um, just having to pay to rally is not the biggest deal, but it's annoying. Looks like Godot has five eighteen. Yep, I believe that's right. Um, which is plenty, but I doubt it's enough to do anything. I would recommend that he does not uh, get a, a Rainbow Dash, like rally the Rainbow Dash, or even like play a Spitfire from hand or anything like that, I think you just got to bank. Because um, I think next turn, he'll probably be able to use Spitfire um, and actually start to get some momentum again. I understand that, um, and if he could actually win this face-off, that would be really good, but I sort of doubt he's going to be able to. Bugle probably has a trick. And Bugle still has that second troublemaker there that didn't uncover last time. Oh, yeah, sorry. I expected a face-off to happen. I don't know why I expected that. Bugle isn't confronting. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, it's a glimmer, which is a lot less scary than I was expecting. It does explain why Bugle played two Troublemakers at once, because one of them was the glimmer. So Bugle gets three points for beating the Legion. If he uh, plays like uh, he did in the last game, uh, maybe he has another Legion, but I don't see it in his hand. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't strongly bet on it. Um, the last time, there were a lot of fear counters on the main, in which case, like, 
getting rid of the Legion and immediately replaying another Legion was like still very strong because the Legion already came into play with three fear counters. Uh, this time, the one fear counter. I'm betting Bugle just decided to farm the Legion now because he's not worried. And fear counters are no longer that big a deal. In which case, probably he doesn't really need to have another Legion in the tank. He's just going to start running. I think Bugle imagines that he can farm to close out this game in two or three turns. And there's nothing really Godot is going to do to stop him. I don't know if that's right, but I do know that it was probably wise to not allow Godot to um, to get the uh, Spitfire out and get three points mm -hmm. on the Triad of Terror. So farming it sooner rather than later, probably not a bad call. And here comes the Thunderlane. Yes, Thunderlane meta, unfortunately, Ooh, as we kind of expected people as a trick. Ah, uh, seven flip, yeah, that's that's hard to come back from. I mean, not the biggest deal because Thunderlane can be moved up for free with Tarnished Reputation, but this was Godot's best chance because probably that Grogar is just going to get farmed next turn. Definitely disappointing, and that would have been a huge uh, game-swinging event if that Thunderlane actually got to go hog wild. Mm -hmm. But it makes sense that Bugle really, since he was in such a strong position, the fact that he decided to farm and he decided to make himself vulnerable by getting rid of the Triad of Terror probably implied that he was holding tricks. And uh, yeah. Yeah, we saw he had a barrel through. He also had melted expectations. Man, it looks like Bugle's at 11 now. It looks like he's at least going to confront and get up to 12, but that's, you know, it would be nicer if he could have a Troublemaker to play it and then next turn have a really easy win. As it is, he might have to double confront next turn, getting to 12 this turn and then three points on the board, just doubling. That would work, since it doesn't look like he has a troublemaker in hand. Um, well, it, look, well, it looks like they'll get a face-off at uh, Bugle's problem if it confronts. Oh, that's a great point. I I didn't think about that. Uh, Bugle doesn't really mind that, probably, because there's only oh. one card that's even exhausted right now. Yeah, that is big. Um, kind of... Take an already good game and make it just a little better. That that Big Mac Princess for a night has really been a um, a strong showing in this deck of Bugles. The fact that Bugle is playing Barrel Through, he's flipping a lot of cards. He's flipping extra cards, and he's a farm deck, so he's and flipping it, cards very regularly. Yeah, and it yeah. also happens from the opponent challenging troublemakers. Exactly, and creating yeah. creating face-offs. Putting some strong chaos effects into farm has always been nice to have, but orange and blue just don't typically have all that many good high-flipping chaotic cards. Um... Princess for a Knight absolutely fits the bill. Most decks don't find room for him, but um, but uh, yeah, it seems to be working here. Yeah, that hurts. That that feels really bad when Godot is paying to move for a move that he could have gotten for free. Um, so, oh, I didn't know. see that he had to pay for it. Yeah, he, he chose to pay two to move Thunderlane there. 
He's probably getting pretty frazzled. Yeah, and it, it's so late. Now, it's not the biggest deal either way, because this game is Bugles to win at this point. He's he's only one double face off away from doing it, and he banked like three or four actions. But um, but yeah, it's just a little sad to see. Because he has a dragon character. Wow, Bugle really thinks he can make that work. Well, he did. Uh. That is, I mean, it's two actions on Bugle's part for a two-point swing to get from, you know, Godot gaining one point for the face-off to Bugle gaining one point for the face-off. It honestly seems like not a very good call if our if our goal here is to just optimize Bugle's chance of winning the game um, because Bugle was already three points away from winning, which is one double face-off. He is now two points away from winning, which is also one double face-off. Oh, I, However, I chose one point away now. Oh. I apologize for that. Well, that's a big difference then. That makes things a lot safer. Thank you for uh, having those eagle eyes, Animoy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> being one point away from winning plus having on tap here a seven? No, eight strength main. Um, that is... You're going to win. Blue can't possibly stop that. So we, we saw the Staff of Sakanis in Bugle's hand. And that means that Applejack is definitely going to have enough to single confront. There's there's not really anything going on here. It's his game if he is at 14. Godot decides to retire the perma exhausted friend yeah pretty reasonable honestly um just because this at least would require a second exhaust to come into play and then until what? that happens all his friends are ready whoa what is ivory doing i think uh i think we're ripping a card uh i couldn't really make out what it was it looked like it might have been spoiled but i'm not sure it was definitely intense, though. Thank you. And you weren't gonna put power I wasn't, and that was the wrong call. <laughs> power play. Uh... Power play is really good. Yeah, power play and barrel through have been. I mean, Bugle's deck flips very high, and it has chaos, and it has dragons, and. Boy, he just really made that work. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of dragons, but uh, he had. Uh, I think it two might only be there. the one. Yeah, I mean they they definitely sit around because they aren't threats. It's just a a dumb three strength body. Um, but Bugle needs to include the card to enter. Um, it's good to to flip his main over with that with that backdraft. So it's enough. <laughs> Grandpa's talking about how Thunderlane was everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it was Thunderlane City, man. I gave my spiel about why Thunderlane is great like four times. In chat, Prism Light tells us that that was an old money that they were tearing. <laughs> A card I miss because it was so flexible. Uh, not flexible enough to uh, withstand high shear forces, it turns out. <laughs> Avoid the ban hammer. I think yeah, I heard uh, that Bugle will get 12 packs for winning. Makes sense. This is a, a pretty high prestige tournament here. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, it was <laughs> everybody gave everybody else cards. Oh my goodness, Marks in Time. Oh, I love Marks in Time packs. 
exactly. How are there still oh, marks in time packs? <laughs> I, I always choose them if I can because I need to get uh, more chrono triggers. <laughs> yeah, Marks in Time was a very powerful uh, set. Pretty good. I'm assuming you didn't make... I was able to finally get my second uh, Princess Cadence before it was banned shortly afterwards. Ah, nice. Yes, my first playset was Tantibus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I only I've only pulled one... Tantibus in all my time, and that's the perfect amount. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I ended up using Tantibuses as tokens. I don't remember what I used them for, but I know I, I wrote with permanent marker on one of them, like, just token. <laughs> Very salty about getting three of those. So basically what Bugle demonstrated to us today was that uh, Triad of Terror is overpowered. Um, it's good he against demonstrated a lot of other things too. It's good against non-pink and it's good against pink when uh, you don't draw your problem removal. <laughs> yeah, when you flip your discord. Oh man. <laughs> That hurt. Well, the good news is we'll get to see everybody's deck lists when they post them to the Reddit probably sometime in the next week. Yep. Um, a lot of mono. Definitely things to study here. A lot to learn from, from what we just saw. Not quite what I expected. A lot that was inspired by uh, the Invitational. Um, like Bugle's deck is not too different from a deck he played in the Invitational, but a lot of surprises as well. That is true. You did pretty good. Look at all this mark. Look at these happy ponies who got their cutie mark, and then the one that heals them. <laughs> uh, Prism Light suggests uh, running the Appaloosa resource. Um, Someone recently ran against me the Rainbow Dash, or not the Rainbow Dash, the Applejack that um, once you have a certain unity, then everything with four uh, yes. or more power cannot be um, frightened or dismissed, mm -hmm. and it's the perfect counter to uh, um, uh, Wrath of Luna, or Wrath, Wrath of Gilda. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, like, this card does nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very good um, Applejack. I do like Appaloosa a little better, being a resource um, and being a little cheaper, but Appaloosa, of course, is only available in Adventure, and um, that Applejack is, is core legal. Certainly a strong card. Yeah, I think uh, Bugle made the meta call that he wasn't going to see pink, and... There was not much pink. It was a lot of aggro, for sure. Even even Big Cheese didn't have uh, uh, pink. He was purple and orange. Yeah, Big Cheese's control. I I uh, don't know what that would have done against Pugil, but but um, getting around those triads of terror, I think probably the only good solutions that Big Cheese had would be um, putting Triad of Terror on the bottom of Bugle's deck and then using School Shutdown to just shuffle the whole deck. And both of those leave Triad of Terror in the deck, so Bugle can just get them back again. All right, so it looks like we have reached the end of the BabsCon Adventure Tournament. Does that mean I have to stop talking? I know. We love talking. That's tragic. We all appreciate you talking. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you for putting this on. Yeah, thank you everybody for watching. And thanks to the participants. Ab absolutely. A big thank you to all of our commentators as well as everyone watching live on Twitch. And thank you, of course, to all the players who came out here to BabsCon, some from continents away. It was a delight to watch. Absolutely. We're glad you all enjoyed it. Uh, we'll have results posted 
before next weekend, um, but obviously we need a little time to get everything in order. Until then, uh, we wish everyone a successful rest of the BabsCon. A personal heartfelt thank you to Animoy and Eminently Sensible for providing live commentary over this first groundbreaking adventure in-person tournament. And of course, a congratulations to B for winning the adventure tournament as well as the core, core tournament yesterday. He's got a hot streak. We can't. Yeah, show off. <laughs> All right. Although he does say he did not win a single match in Team Seal, so everything balances out. <laughs> Karma. All right. Thanks With for all watching. that said, though, thank you to each and every one of our viewers, both here now and watching this recording later. We are, as always, commentary is magic. I am and pause. Big Cheese is AFK right now. All right, Kat. And Ivory Starlight's here. Sorry that my one loss in Swiss was on stream. <laughs> and with us commentating, we have... Eminently Sensible. And Animoy. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you so much. Bye.